big slot. If everyone's that hungry, they can, they can go. It's, what I'm going to say is not that big of a deal. Now, um, thanks for being here. Uh, I'm Michael Camorn of Camorn Law. I have with me a couple lawyers that I brought, uh, Jeff Frazier and Josh Colton. They're here with me. Um, we've been practicing, I've been practicing law for 25 years, the last 10 exclusively regarding uh, cannabis law. And um, it's been a pretty wild ride. I could do a whole four hours on that. But I'm here to talk about hemp. And it's an interesting uh, area. As, you, as many of you know, Michigan just legalized uh, cannabis for adults. And there's a piece within that that discusses industrial hemp. When I, and, and let me try to define or describe the three different areas that, that kind of are the industry where you've got cannabis, the licensing MMFLA, and the legalization that sits on top of that or co coordinates with that. There's CBD, which is another aspect of this industry, from the hemp plant, and then there's hemp, as I would include in that, in industrial hemp and um, plastics and uh, remediation and biofuel and hempcrete and food and seeds, and uh, a tremendous uh, resource this plant is for uh, industry. So regarding that third area of hemp, um, when you look at what has happened within the law, I'm a lawyer, so I always default to this, in terms of the cannabis plant, uh, you gotta look at some of what your liabilities are going forward. I'm not gonna talk about what those may be for the cannabis industry, but I'm gonna suggest that when you look at hemp, we are much further along than the uh, cannabis or marijuana industry. The uh, federal government, uh, in terms of hemp, is, has a uh, hemp farming act that allows for states to uh, participate in um, pilot programs, educational um, programs, which currently exist in Michigan. There's been uh, difficulty getting those off the ground. There's not a lot of universities that are getting behind it at this point, but this is the state of the law in terms of liabilities. Those that are following the uh, marketplace here, or the political side of it, Mitch McConnell, of all people, is championing the hemp uh, bill currently made it out of the Senate, it's in the um, committee, and has a chance of being passed, which would allow for states to um, farm hemp. And I think when you look at this as the trend, you can clearly see that the federal government's already taken a step off the starting line in regards to addressing this in a water manner compared to the marijuana. It still, it still has a lot of uh, unknowns, one could say. I'm bullish about hemp, let me say it that way. The, um, so when you look at what's happening and where this direction is going to go, I think there's a, a lot of opportunities. There's um, companies that uh, we've been contacted by that just want to add some hemp products, whether it be a, a milk or a, um, a shot of some uh, juice or what have you, just to kind of introduce it into their branding as a as a health op, you know health op opportunity. And um, when you're thinking about where you're going to, uh, you know, be interested in, in putting your money. There's not a lot of um, dominance in this space thus far. There's a lot of opportunity to get in and command it. There's, uh, of the existing laws in the state of Michigan, there's some pending legislation, some good, some bad. We're involved with trying to help rewrite some of the language to make it more uh, workable, I would say. But there's a lot of work that needs to be done, especially with the legalization piece of, of the, whatever, 9 or 10 or 15 pages of the legalization piece. There's like one paragraph that refers to it which obviously needs some other types of legislative action and some oversight and administration the way it's gonna go. It has not been written yet. So as you uh, contemplate and uh, you know, wanna get in this marketplace, you can have an impact theoretically of helping to write the uh, oversight you know, regula regulations and even participate potentially in writing some of the law. Um, there is, um, you know, the United States is the uh, greatest importer of hemp of all the countries that comes from China, Canada, and um, there is, uh, you know, eight, eight, I think it was eight hundred million dollars in sales last year, um, half of which was CBD. The other half involved um, the, you know, textiles and foods and uh, snacks and things to that effect. So it's already going on. There's a, you know, there's obviously a market here, and I, uh, I look at it like this. You know, at some point, I believe that there's going to be a, fl a switch that's flipped on so that people can start farming hemp. And you have this existing marketplace that is importing it, manufacturing it, or importing it as it's manufactured and put it into the marketplace. So 
you know, there's, there's, these things are already going on. Money is being made, sales are being made. There's, there's, uh, you know, um, outlets and, and streams of uh, distribution. So it's just waiting to be, you know, grown in the United States or Michigan made or manufactured in Michigan. And um, unlike cannabis, because we represent uh, cannabis businesses and we've taken, we have a couple of people have been licensed and it's a whole new thing. You know, people are throwing money this way and whatnot, but still the speculation exists. But in terms of hemp, there's never been a city council person that I've spoken to that didn't, you know, acknowledge, you know, looking at it differently, um, loving the idea of bringing back manufacturing jobs, you know. I remember having this conversation with the, it's no longer there, but the mayor in uh, Highland Park when I was talking about the project with getting some universities involved in growing hemp, and he, he was offering me the Henry Ford, um, you know, original manufacturing plant in, in Highland Park because it's, you know, potential for like a revolution or, um, say a, a new uh, renaissance of manufacturing is what uh, the hemp industry provides. And I think, uh, you know, the, the explanation of it and, and to become more uh, knowledge about it, it is, uh, you know, defi it's still from the cannabis sativa plant, but it has Michigan 3%, 0.3% uh, uh, THC and the federal definition is 6%, 0.6%. And, um, you know, it's, it's something that is understood. There's a history in the United States. You know, there's a movie, if you want to check it out on uh, YouTube, Hemp for Victory. The United States was uh, recording farmers or educating farmers to grow hemp for the uh, World War II effort. So, I mean, you know, the, the Constitution was written on hemp. George Washington smoked out of his uh, hemp pipe and played the harmonica is the story. But um, if there's been a long history of it in the United States. It's, you know, part of it. And, you know, Kentucky's taking some steps to... Uh, lead the way, but uh, Michigan has always been historically a farming town, and, and you know, I look at it like those uh, farm products are gonna need a place to be manufactured and put into the marketplace. Um, we're, we're, just for those that are involved, interested in getting involved, we talk about this a lot. Um, on my, we do a radio show, uh, Planet Green Trees. I, a couple people are here, Rick Thompson, who spoke earlier, and Jamie Lowe's here, he also participates in it. We have like 403 episodes we did. You know, so every week there's an update about something in the law that we talk about. It's informative for those that are interested. Also, we're, you know, there's a national um, hemp industries association, and we're gathering the Michigan chapter, and, and are uh, proud to be uh, starting that soon. So there's going to be, you know, the hemp is real, and it's going to be happening. And um, Michigan, I hope, is going to be the place that uh, this market is, uh, you know, begins to be dominated. We start hearing things like "Made in Michigan." You know, that's that's I think the future for hemp. I'll take some questions if I got a little bit of time or, um, okay. Go ahead, over you. Yeah, uh, it's, oh, that's a good point. And I forgot to talk about that. It's a uh, phytoremediation. It is a uh, plant that can remove metals from the ground. It could fix the entire Flint water crisis. Okay. I mean, yes, it's another fact. I use it at, um, you know, the, uh, nuclear plants that have uh, accidents and have destroyed the land. There's uh, land, you know, the, all the, uh, a lot of cities around the, the state of uh, Michigan that have had industry are sitting on a bunch of land that is contaminated. They can do nothing with sitting on their books. They can't get rid of it because it's dangerous. So this whole phytoremediation is a, you, and I'm glad you reminded me, is a uh, phenomenal um, project that can really not only um, be a business in and of itself, but clean land in industrial areas that is just sitting in waste and can be you know, repurposed for a number of different things, including areas that you might opt in for this industry or the cannabis industry that's just off, you know, not even being used. But thanks for reminding me that it's true. It's a phenomenal plant is, I didn't want to you know, get too crazy about it, but uh, that's it. Yes, you had a question too. How is Lara regulating CBD? Uh, isn't a better question, why is Laura regulating CBD? Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't even pay attention because it doesn't matter. I mean, no, I, they're trying to say that you can only purchase CBD that is, that is uh, sold through one of the licensed facilities. Now, Michigan's had an interesting experience with this because it, 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 just in the last years, the DEA has gotten involved in trying to define it and put on the schedule. Um, but it's been going on, obviously, you know, I have people that tell me, it's legal, I bought it on the internet, this, you know, they had some shipped to me. Um, 
the real legal issue is where does it come from? It comes from the hemp plant. It's not supposed to be within the category that falls from a federal federal standpoint. Whether or not Lara has the right to do that, I, I don't. I mean, it's not on the Michigan controlled substances list. It's not listed as something that, if you possessed it, is illegal, and it has never been federal either. Um, so what is Lara doing? Lara is trying to. Uh, limit the outside market that exists essentially in Michigan and try to, I would say, is Shelly still here? Maybe she can answer. But I would say, you know, they're trying to, you know, keep it all housed in the, under the text, you know, and, and, and keep it as far as, but listen, the, so I was going to say in terms of the history, you know, the, the, there are people in Michigan caregivers who have tried to get involved in this and sell over the internet and whatnot. And I, I just tell you, it reminded of a story that involved uh, the FDA started sending out letters to people, um, identifying them, and they're listed on the FDA's uh, website. Now, some would say that if you get a letter from the FDA, it's a win, instead of the DEA kicking at your door. But they said, you know, listen, you cannot advertise this as medicine. And that's another problem that's gonna draw attention. It, it's, you know, as a nutritional vitamin, or, you know, a nutritional supplement is something that's better derived from the hemp plant, as you see in at Whole Foods. You can go buy the same kind of, but, um, and the second part of the letter was, oh, and we tested your so-called CBD, and there's a lot of THC in it. You know, so that's what the letter said. And um, but that is, you know, what the direction of the federal government is going to be on that, I don't know yet. I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to make a prediction. Obviously, it's something that is um, huge industry, and I think the debate right now is who's going to control the, you know, the, the, where the money's going. I think because it's, you know, I think. I don't think the government's going to get involved with the plant selling and buying and all that, but they certainly want the, to. I think control some of the CBD market, which is easier to you know, extract and process and you know test and whatnot, and control. I don't know if that answers your question, but that's that's the best I got. Yeah, got time for one more. Sure. Just in the back. The D. It's not on the controlled substance. The DEA has placed it and made the argument for. It, so it is. That's how they're looking at it. But it's. Um, this has been debated in the past. The history of it is that the hemp industries was, you know, in 2000, 2002 uh, against the DEA and the federal court ruled, we're gonna use your DEA definition of what marijuana is, which is all parts of the cannabis sativa L plant, but does not include the mature stalks and the seeds. Because all the hemp products at the time called, were coming from the mature stalks or the seeds. So they said, screw you DEA, we're gonna use your definition of marijuana and these things aren't marijuana, so you can't even call them marijuana. You can't say that they're legal. So now their you know, positioning is um, obviously based in, in the um, pharmaceutical, you know, that, that's, that's why it is. The, the justification for it, even the FDA sent a letter to the telling them they shouldn't do it. And they said, well, we're, we're trying to research it for marketing manufacturing. That's why it is. Now, I mean, if you're asking me, should you take down a... Uh, your internet site that's selling CBD, you know, I, I haven't seen, that is not, ha you see, you're not seeing raids about that yet. I think the DA is focused on other things right now, but, you know, check back with me tomorrow, I may have a different answer. Right. That's all, that's uh, okay, all that's good. Again, unfortunately. Thank you. Thank you. All right, everyone give it up for Michael.